Hello, hello, Tyler Bryden here. I hope everything's going well. It feels like just yesterday, recording a video about Stability AI raising $100 million at a $1 billion valuation. And it basically was just yesterday. And here I am today uh, recording another video, this time for Jasper AI, uh, $125 million USD Series A uh, at a $1.5 billion valuation. So uh, things are moving in the land of generative AI. We've seen massive, massive innovation over the last years, but I think in an acute way, the last few months have been absolutely insane. And then now with the amount of usage, the hype, the excitement, the money uh, is starting to pour into it. And Jasper was... Uh, and is one of the leaders in the space. They, you may have seen them. They were everywhere with Facebook ads, Instagram ads, uh, and they were known at that time as conversion AI. They then, I think, rebranded to um, Jarvis or had a piece of the system named Jarvis, and then Marvel came at them uh, with the name Jarvis. And so they finally end up in the state, uh, Jasper here. And like the, the growth that they've had it's absolutely insane. So they're at 40 mil. They started like a year and a half ago, and I should get all of this perfectly right, but I'm probably not. But they're at more than 70,000 customers, 40 million in revenue last year, and they expect that to double um, uh, by the end of 2022 with 90 million uh, USD in revenue. And so when you think of that, the stickiness of the platform, the value that people are getting onto the platform, the 1.5 billion valuation makes sense. And yeah, we're in sort of distressed times for market and market conditions. But in that case, uh, companies that are rising to the top from a traction perspective, growth perspective, they are then diluting um, they're not diluting, but focusing the capital into those areas. And then the other thesis around this is just the generative AI as a whole. And so with that, Jasper ends up in a really great place where they can continue to lead uh, in this space. There are other companies in this space and maybe you've come across them, Copy AI, WordTune, uh, WriteSonic, we've got uh, PepperType. I don't know some of the, all of these, but Copy AI and WordTune definitely stick out to me. And um, and what was super fascinating was, well, one thing was the actual investors who invested. So this is a this is a quite a, a lineup. We've got uh, KOTU, Bessemer Venture Partners, IVP, Foundation Capital, Founder Circle Capital, HubSpot Ventures, and more. So I've got, as always, you know, you see me opening with way too many tabs here. I've got all those pulled up. Uh, if you want to check them out, the HubSpot one, super interesting. And you wonder what that leads to in terms of uh, futures and everything here. Uh, check, checking out just a couple of things from... Um, uh, like a pricing standpoint, just to understand them a little bit more. And I've followed along and have looked at enabling even some of the content creation that I've done with this. And I've just never made that jump. It both seemed like the, the speed factor, like publish content 10 times faster. I believe that, um, but I'm still not necessarily publishing content myself all the time. In fact, if I am, I would rather do it in a video form like this. And so, uh, but you know, as, a, as this continues and as I've seen the growth of Copy AI, I've seen this and as I've been part of the communities here, I think you can see in here that I'm part of the, uh, uh, sorry, that uh, classic. Um, that basically, you can see that I'm part of the Facebook community here people very happy overall. And there's also some great case studies um, around the uh, success of people who have put this even to website content to then accelerate the growth um, of that in organic search and then even figuring out how to make people convert better. And so when all that then sort of pieces together, I think ah, maybe it's worthwhile for me to re-dive back into some of these technologies. And I think there is some fear right now because, uh, because, Google search engines are trying to identify what is AI generated content in ways it goes against their um, sort of policies for publishing content on the web and uh, the algorithms to detect what is AI generated content will, um, you know, have some uh, could possibly be detrimental to SEO in the long run. And so we don't know exactly how that's going to play out, but it is definitely something to consider and something that I'm certainly thinking about. Um, and the other thing is like, there's also questions around sort of the, uh, I guess sort of the uh, ethics, the um, the sort of mm, 
the data that had originally been scraped from this to create the ability to then generate this content. From my understanding, Cat Jasper is still using uh, OpenAI's GPT-3, and then they're now actually launching uh, separate pieces within um, uh, within Jasper, which we can see even, for example, Jasper Art. I'm guessing they're using OpenAI's DALI 2 here. There's the relationship already there with GPT-3. And then if not, maybe they're using Stable Diffusion uh, or Mid Journey or something like that. It looks like it's either Stable Diffusion or OpenAI's um, DALI uh, 2. And a couple you know, other things from that pricing perspective, like you can see the breakdown of plans, where they are. And if you actually do this, look at you know, the pricing for OpenAI and GPT-3 versus what they're charging, my belief is that they are making a pretty good profit on this. And that's another reason why so much capital has then um, flooded uh, into this company here with that pace, with that profit margin, with the growth. And one of the quotes that uh, comes from, I believe Dave uh, there is, we're a hyper growth company that is also focused on profitability. And so that's music to the ears of investors in today's world who are uh, trying to focus on great companies who can get to this profitable place, uh, especially with some of the other plays and technology that didn't end up in profitability, not necessarily turning out uh, so well. So I got a couple other uh, quick things that I'll touch on. I've got some links um, here. And one of them was from launch to unicorn in 18 months. This is people, you know, sort of the journey that people see. And what I loved was that he pointed out that this is not how this has actually happened. This has been an eight year journey where they've had sort of an ambitious goal of basically creating a, an, an agency. Uh, you can see, you know, all the sort of story here. They got their first paycheck of $375, which was very, very exciting. They spent then three years building a course, teaching all things marketing. Um, they got a little bit more uh, money in that case, D struggled to scale, tried to get into YC. You even have a quote from Michael here that they did not get in uh, YC. Uh, and then they started to build... Um, Proof, the company Proof, which then scaled up from zero to 175K MRR in 10 months. And uh, when you do that and then you have the vision, uh, that gives you a better shot at YC. So they actually got in that time. I don't think Proof played out exactly the way that they want. So they got some pictures here uh, in Austin, even after they had raised 2.2 million, but they struggled, realized Proof was a feature, not a company. Uh, they realized how hard it was. And they had stalled, basically. They were burning money. They were getting really tired. They had to lay off a bunch of people on their team. And they said, if we could build anything, what would we build? At this point, this is when OpenAI came out, GPT-3. They have even a text message about uh, spinning up a front end to, on top of GPT-3 to write high converting ads, conversion AI, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, it seems like they were excited about that right away. So on January 5th, 2021, they launched it. Uh, since then, I've seen so many ads. They've built, uh, you know, what seems to be an incredible community. You can see they've got Jarvis and then they've scratched out and got Jasper there. And, and then sort of ends on this idea that Jasper looks like an overnight success, but it's actually been eight years. And for six years, it was relatively a complete struggle. And, but that struggle gave them the skills that they needed to build Jasper today. And I think that was just something beautiful because you see these big numbers. You see that I myself am a, a software company owner. It's hard and you're just like, why am I doing this? This is difficult. And is this ever going to hit what the way that I want? And am I wasting my time? And am I, uh, you know, making short term, sac you know, sacrifices that you hope have some sort of success in the end that might not. And so all these questions sort of emerge. And so I was really grateful for them uh, to share that they are, you know, are growing quickly. They've got, I think, 150 people almost on their team. I've got a couple uh, just if you want to connect with them, uh, I've got some LinkedIn uh, profiles here of the actual team itself. Uh, Chris, the co-founder there, and, you know, really crispy messaging. Uh, overall, uh, you know, very impressive project uh, and company. I liked one thing that they did. I think I have it here in the TechCrunch article, uh, is that they uh, gave, like, basically credits back to their customers who have been their customers. And then they also made a nice deal around an annual uh, plan. So let me uh, it's somewhere in this article. Anyways, let me see. I probably could use the, the old uh, free credit. Oh, now I look like an idiot. Yep, I'm going to stop it now. Here we go. Uh, and it's not taking me to the right spot. So one of the articles, God damn it, you idiot, Tyler. 
one of the articles talks about how they're giving uh, free, you know, free credits away back sort of as a thank you for being such a great part of the community. And I thought that was a really nice thing where when you're a com- customer, you see a company raise that much money. Part of the reason why they raise that much money is that you've been using the product, growing it, giving them feedback. So I just thought that was uh, something super nice. And again, all these articles are in here. You've got links to TechCrunch, the actual announcement, their investors, you've got their Facebook community. If you want to join that, you've got uh, PitchBook, you've got a couple um, sort of other sort of um you know, why people, why investors as a whole are seeing like uh, GPT-3C systems and just content creation systems and generative AI systems, uh, you know, so valuable. Um, And we're in a complete paradigm shift and that's uh, becoming more and more clear to me. Um, I'm certain at this standpoint, this technology is not going away. And now there are bets being made on the leaders in this space and Jasper uh, is definitely one of them. And yeah, there's lots of other great ones too. Uh, Copy AI definitely sticks to my mind specifically for the application of this but uh you know there's overall there's uh, a long way to go and uh, the big companies are going to start um seeing success and i wanted to show one other thing quickly just as a, a little teaser for uh um, what is coming up which is basically i think this is not isolated i think we're going to continue to basically see more of this and so what i have here is uh the article from uh, sequoia generative ai uh talking about you know their analysis of this space and in the end they have an open call uh for startups and so i'm going to dive deeper into this in a dedicated video because i think this is super important and when a company or like a firm as big as this and as much history and success as this does the work to do this and then releases it publicly and puts a call out i think that is definitely uh, worth uh, checking out. So uh, let me know if you use Jasper, if you use any of these tools, we'd love to hear. It's super fascinating. Um, yeah, I'm looking now at how can I can, uh, you know, maybe build this into the workflow in a better way. And um, overall, I think just a crazy, crazy time that we're in. I appreciate you being on that crazy ride with me if you check this video out. If you did and you liked it, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.